let's roll. I call the select board meeting to order. And uh, first thing is, I think, set adjust agenda, although I don't actually have the agenda in front of me. Hang on. Yeah, set adjust agenda. Does anybody have any changes? Wiz, did you want to throw in a discussion about the extending the depot lease? Could to we please? Huh? Could we please? Okay, with yes, me. Please. Does anyone uh, want a brief update uh, at the end about the um, police contract? I have a little bit of news. Do you want yes, please. Okay, do you want to do that? And uh, it could be an executive session, depending on what you guys want to get into. I think what I have to relate isn't that different from what's already been sent an email, but. Hello. Your call, Eric, your caller. Kaylee, does executive session make sense since that's that's what we've done in the past? Yeah, typically we uh, um, have any kind of contract discussions in executive session, and the the idea behind that is that um, you know potentially discussing contract. Or, positions in open meeting potentially puts you at a negotiating disadvantage. So um, sure, we can, I mean, I basically just have an update, but we can do that in an executive session. Um, so let's add that. So we're gonna add uh, an item number, is it three? Yeah, like a third um, thing to discuss the lease to the um, historical society for the depot. And we'll add an executive session uh, to discuss the HTB, just an update on the police contract with Greensboro. Um, and that somebody could fill in the blanks later for which Vermont statute that is that says you can use an executive session for contract discussions. Thank you. Chapter 5, Section 313. Oh, there we go. All right, so could we have a motion to uh, adjust the agenda? So moved. All right, Sherry moves. Second it. Lucian's got the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Kaylee. Aye. There we go. That's everyone. So that's all the eyes have it unanimously. All right, next up is um, to review and approve the 2021 town meeting warning, which is of course a little bit of the funky monkey because we're not actually having a town meeting. Um, so any, uh, I know Alberta's had a couple iterations, people have provided feedback and um, any, any comments on the current draft. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, let me see if I can just pull it up quickly. Any, uh, not quickly, of course. Um, where is it? Ah, oh, there it is, 2021. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion to approve the annual town meeting warning for March 2nd, 2021, um, which says to show up and vote uh, at the fire station? Liz is moving it uh, on mute, I think. Oh, and Kaylee, Kaylee got there off mute first, so do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second. Ah, we have a second from Sherry. So all in favor of um, approving the warning as submitted by Alberta, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. 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 That's five ayes. So the ayes have it. Thank um, you, everyone. What's the first motion on that? I couldn't hear. Uh, I think Kaylee got the motion. OK, thank you. And Wiz, uh, sorry, Sherry got the second. Wiz tried to get the motion, but she was on mute. So I only saw it, I didn't hear it. Um, thank you, Alberta, for getting that set up because uh, it is a little different this year. Um, any, 
anything you could share with us on uh, the number of people who may have submitted uh, but because deadline has passed for submitting a signature for the uh, for any open positions right that is correct yep um, um, so for select many? board we, we have one person who put their name in for the three-year seat that would be sherry <laughs> Wow. Um, and then we have, and then we have three people that put their names in for the two open one year seats. Wow, great. So that's better than we feared. Having an open seat. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Thank you. And, and uh, mm -hmm. people, did anybody put in for the school boards? Um, yes, I, I've got to double check my numbers this morning, but I, I've got um, someone for the Hazen seat for the three-year term. I didn't end up getting someone to finish the two years on a three-year term, which I thought I had someone sending a consent form. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. And then I believe that there'll be a full five-member board um, for the OSU ESD board also. We had three applications come in for the three open seats there, so. Oh, great. Excellent. Um, very good. Thank you. We did, um, we did not have to take any um, action, Alberta, for the wastewater bond item. Is that correct? That's all been, that's been done. It's just a matter of processing the signatures at this phase. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's correct, Sean. You took care of the vote last week. It's just getting the signatures, which is also in my office with this. Oh, uh, and while we're on signatures, we have to visit the town offices before, ideally before noon, correct? Before noon today, or I'll be back in the office tomorrow morning by like 8 9 o'clock. So, um, so the, you guys could stop in tomorrow too if today doesn't work. The door will be unlocked, or should we? Um, leave Tanya's there. Coming? She'll be watching. Let me know when you're coming. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, let me get back to my, where's my agenda? Hello. So many windows. All right. So next is select board to provide feedback on the preferred plan for the pedestrian bridge project. And this was really because um, there's a grant deadline looming and Jeff needs direction on what he's applying for. I believe. So, for example, if we were just wanting to do a repair, then we'd probably seek a smaller amount. If we were going to want to move to replacement, we would seek a larger amount, I believe. I'm happy to make a motion if you are interested in that. Sure. I, I have a quick question. Okay. Um, I guess my question was, are we, is the town planning on writing a grant to USDA either way? Yes. So that was that was my understanding coming off the last meeting. It's just a question of uh, what the project is that we're writing a grant for. Does that make sense? I mean, I suppose there's a third option too. If the select board here said our preferred method for our preferred uh, path forward is to not do anything, then Jeff wouldn't. But um, I believe the discussion last time was there's a grant deadline. Do we want to write it for a, a replacement project or a repair project? I suppose we could write it for a removal project as well, deferring to Lucian's idea. But um, I don't know how well that would be received. Oh, I have to let the dog out. I'll be right back. Um, so Sean, maybe you can answer my second question, um, which is, I, mean, I, um, I, I understand that we're making this vote basically so that Jeff can write a grant or not, or uh, write at least the letter of intent or not. Um, are we planning on moving? Is this vote? voting on planning and moving forward either way, no matter what, or just for the USDA opportunity? So I think um, we, we need to kind of decide 
My understanding is that the USDA grant opportunity has a fast approaching deadline. If we want to get in on this round, we should decide how we're how we want to proceed. Does that make so sense? So the yeah, the, so to, this is Sean. The um, uh, we have these two. We have these parallel processes, and what we're trying to do is just. Um, the way we're kind of thinking about it right now with this grant opportunity is uh, there's this big unknown. We're assuming we're going to get an award. So that's a, I think that's an important point to make right here now, of course. So I, you know, I hesitated. I'm glad Eric spoke up when you asked the question initially there, Kaylee, because I, I'm, I think in some respects, we are trying to solidify. This is how we're trying to move forward. Uh, obviously what's triggering the discussion right now is a February 21st deadline for this application. So I'm sorry, go ahead. It's Sherry. I just um, didn't Jeff say something like uh, that if he didn't, uh, he could apply for whichever amount, you know, now, but then most likely the process will include another round of this grant. So if we don't, if we apply for a lower amount because we're thinking about just financing, trying to get money for a replacement, um, that they might not look so kindly on us returning for more money later if we change our minds or if we just need more money or whatever. Didn't he say something like that when, when we were I think, talking about I it? Think right? It, uh, right, so if I think he said something like that if we submitted for repair now, right? Not replacement. Right, right. Then, and then it would be hard to go back to the same source for additional money when we wanted to replace harder yeah so is this grant the only grant that was that's available for this kind of thing at all no there are I mean, many grants that are out there because i wonder if, if um if you did another grant source for repair um might be more on the historic thing re reparation stuff i don't know how it works um and then you know decide to go for this usda grant later on when when a replacement needs to happen And then more money. Well, the uh, the, the yeah, logistics I, issue on the ERD, is it okay if I offer a comment, Eric? Go ahead. Uh, the logistics issue on the RDBG, um, and, and just so we have it, you know, the, the executive brief from the task force was preferred approach was uh, do a replacement. The challenge we're into right now is uh, we're, you know, the numbers we're seeing on this project are uh, above a half million dollars. We don't have the match available right now. We, you know, we've got an upcoming, you know, it's just, we don't have that match. The most we could get out of the RD, or the, um, I'll just say USDA, since it's easier to say, the USDA award with the application due February 21st, we're eligible for up to a quarter million dollars there. Um, you know, if we were to obtain a quarter million, uh, we'd have to commit in a very timely fashion to figure out what's the balance of this. So, you know, that's the logistical challenge. The money side's the logistical challenge. It always is, of course. Um, and the time frame to, if we were uh, granted that amount, what was the time frame that would have to be used in, or is that a, a strict time frame? Because usually um, there's there are ways to. Um, you know, work with it much like the yellow barn. Um, we can you can work with these different entities and match up the money and patchwork it together. Uh, I don't know the exact, but if it's similar, what I would offer is this: if it's similar to community facilities grants, which we the town has achieved and has, it's a two-year window. Uh, you know, generally before yeah. you get to get going here. Yeah. Um, that you, you have know, to that, go ahead, Eric. Um, do you have to show some uh, ability or, or a plan for the rest of the funds when you apply for the quarter million up front? What well, we would have Jeff, to do is indicate, Jeff uh, Jeff and I discussed this morning. So what Jeff did is just he, I said, Jeff, give me some suggested language depending on how this goes so that we could have the board off, you know, depending on how the motion and discussion goes here, give me some preferred language that you can be attaching to the applications. So if we decided, if the, if the uh, preference of the board is to go forward on this replacement strategy, then we would be going after the entire quarter million. And we would have to say at this phase, we are committed to find the remainder of the funds. It's you know, a basic statement such as that. But we wouldn't have to say the other We don't have to give the detail on the line sources. items necessarily. We don't, we don't need the sources. Although Jeff has identified multiple sources 
that we that potentially we could apply to. He's he's already got a list of possible places we could go to. You know, I think the uh, I, I just uh, I think the it was just interesting hearing the conversation Thursday night about uh, the repair tactic, but you just it's hard to predict. How does that look on the return on investment? So it's it's just a, it's a tricky one to try to figure out what's the best strategy here. I think initially so, when we were talking about the, the replacement seemed like, um, I can't remember what the figures were, but it was close to 250,000 or something. And then since then, just other more and more information we've gotten, it's gone up. And so initially it seemed like repair didn't really make sense because the, the dollar per year was very much higher than a replacement. But now it seems like since the replacement cost is higher, um, the, the repair is looking more viable from, a, from just a return you know, dollars per year point of view. I think it's still my I mean, interest in the really know how replacement years. was simply to get the downtown up and running as quickly as possible. Replacement you or know, repair? It, it, you need repair. It's just flat out dollars and cents. It doesn't make sense to spend fifty thousand dollars to repair it and then five years later spend dollars in the first place and just replaced it. Um, but if that's not going to get the downtown up and running, um, or if that's not a problem, then I think it makes more sense to just go ahead and flat out replace it, go through the process, which is probably going to be about a two year process. I guess that's my, so my question is, if, if part of the survey tells us that downtown really needs this bridge as soon as possible, mm -hmm. Basically, that's what I got from the survey. A two-year process on a grant and a replacement is a long time to not have the bridge. So that combined with the dilutions point, the total dollars, I don't. I mean, that would have to come from a bond. Am I? I mean, I don't know where else it would come from. If we're going to guarantee half of, or at least a match. And then if we don't get the grant, then we're basically committing to replacing it and then not having $250,000. And I know that there are other grant opportunities, but it's just, it seems like replacement is actually a longer, potentially a longer process than we think. It might be two years. Um, so I don't know if, well, that doesn't sound like it's ideal for the community to wait that long. With the, with the construction schedule, sorry, the dog is going crazy about something. But with the construction schedules and even a little replacement in between step, that could take two years as well. No? Uh, uh, Cherry, um, go ahead. Is, is there, I didn't see that information in the report in terms of the timing, like how long it would take to replace how long it would take for a totally new bridge. I might've missed it. Is there a spot that tells us? No, no, we didn't, we, did, timeline? we weren't able to necessarily map that out because you know, bear in mind, we don't necessarily, we don't have a detailed design at this phase. Uh, for the good of the conversation, Jeff had put together some basic language, which there's, there's a couple of variations on the motion. And this just came in as we were talking. Uh, Eric asked prior about what's the let or, or we did here what's the level of detail if we decided to go after a full replacement what is that actual commitment and uh, Jeff's you know cross check in with the grant application so if uh, what's listed if we were to do the full commitment the first sentence is motion to commit to x number of dollars from and we actually would have to indicate you know where's that money going to be coming from so it's a correction on my previous statement and this is with Jeff just providing this information. The point is this, if we're going after 250, we know our final cost is estimated at about half of a million, 400,000 for the bridge, and then um, you know some abutment costs and some design costs. If we were able to achieve the 250,000 with the RDBG, for us to submit the application on Feb 21, at this phase, uh, you know we have to indicate somewhere or how that, okay, here's how we can cover or do the match. We don't necessarily know that level of detail right now. Can't that sentence just be other uh, sources of grant funds and or a bond vote in the future? I can check this level of detail with Jeff, but um, 
Uh, you're, you're basically, you're, you're, I guess the, the primary point here is you're, you're making the commitment at this phase. It gets back to Kaylee's question. Is this about us trying to open up the grant opportunities or are we making the final decision how we're going to go? My sense is we're kind of making that final determination. This is how it's going to go. So we're putting the money on the table. So this grant, how often does it come around? This Probably. annually. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Annually. Okay. So be another year before we could meet this deadline again. Um, so, so I, I guess- So if we go forth, I'm sorry, Eric. Well, I guess I would say that I think that the, um, that the issue here is not that, you know, you have to identify. It's just that if you, if we identify where the rest of the funds are coming from, we have a stronger application, probably. I mean, that's my kind of experience in the past mm -hmm. is it's not really about a correct answer. It's about making your application as strong as it can be. So we do have some. If we go for don't... this quarter of a million and don't get it, um, then we can rethink this. If we go for the quarter of a million with the intention of replacing um, and do get it, then then we've got another quarter of a million to to find. And it sounds like that would not be impossible cobbling together a whole bunch of stuff that Jeff has identified uh, and perhaps a little bit of the town money, maybe a bond, but not necessarily. So I think to that point, um, generally, depending on which, I don't know which other funds he's identified, but generally speaking, um, a lot of federal funds require that the maximum federal money in any project is 80%. So I think we would wanna count on at least um, 20% of local money. So in a half million, that's 100,000. Um, I guess I would throw out there the idea that it would be possible if the select board wanted to um, move 100,000 out of the fund balance for this project. So that's a possible source of match. Um, to me, it seems like a reasonable approach. It's not something you would do every day, but you don't have a you know, expensive piece of infrastructure fail every day, you hope. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we could raise $100,000 by subscription. I was stunned at how generous people were when it came to working at the, doing things for the depot. Sherry, you said you got, you know, you got a goodly sum on one request to, to do the townhouse. The bridge is such an iconic and such a useful piece that I would not be at all surprised if we could just raise $100,000 if that's what it comes down to. So I leave a $150,000 gap for other um, grants. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Jeff's job. I think your uh, the fundraising concept I think is really a, a positive thought process and I know I've had a couple instances already that uh, some folks in the fall contacted me and said they actually called in and said I was in town you know my family's been in the area for years and it was really sad to see the bridge was down how can I help so I, I think there might be some opportunities there to Wiz's point and if we pursue downtown designation there's another hundred thousand dollars available through those those monies, those grants that are available to down to designated downtowns. There's a lot of logistics on that concept, Sherry, that you already yes, know about. Yes, there are. Yes, so there are. Just uh, not quick. No, that's okay though. I mean, just it's about opportunities. That's the main point here. It's about opportunities and trying to cover the cost and not have this be uh, another burden um, on the backs of everybody. But it's an important asset, so it does take an investment. I have a question about the budget for the replacement. Um, so some of the materials in the, the document, um, you know, the document states the kind of a um, report of the bridge task force. And then there are a couple of supporting documents. And one of them is a, a quote for a prefab bridge, which I think is quoted at 190,000. And I understand that that's just the cost of the bridge to blow and Cody. It's not an installed price. I understand that. But are we saying that 
um, like it's 190,000 for a prefab bridge and another 210,000 to have it installed and another 100,000 for the abutments and another 25 to take out the, I mean, is it really, I guess my, the crux of my question is, does it really cost more to put the bridge in than to buy the bridge? Um, I think that, um, I think there's some efficiencies to be gained. Uh, the first thing I would note is the, uh, the placeholder, um, you know, wasn't a comprehensive engineering review. It was based on similars. So I could say this, you know, the placeholder cost that we got from one vendor does not include abutment work. Um, you know, we would anticipate some abutment work. The placeholder we saw on that was uh, $100,000. Uh, there would be some design, um, the, there would be some installation cost um, assigned. Um, I think it would be reasonable for us to assume at this phase, you know, you're just, we should probably be considering about a half of a million. And then if there are efficiencies to be gained, depending on how we want to go and what we want it to look like, we do our best to, uh, you know, be efficient and have something that works for the community. So I think there's a little bit of cost savings there, I guess is what I'm trying to say, Eric. The thing I like right. about this prefab approach is that, you know, they can work on the abutments. They could build the bridge in the winter months. They come over here April 15th, bang, we're in operation for that next summer season. They literally hang the thing with a crane. So uh, this being said, obviously we're not talking about uh, if it's a cable suspension type as is existing. And that's something that we have to evaluate as we go. But the cable, that was a cable suspension type that was in that quote. Right, mm -hmm. but we're not required to do the same type bridge. No, but it, it, I'm just saying that that was a prefab, you know, comes in three sections and it was a suspension. So it, it is apparently also possible to get a similar style as a prefab option. I, I mean, not that there has to be, I'm just, that those, it's just easier to get prices on those, it seems like. So it sounds like the price is going to vary depending on what design gets chosen in the end. There's some wiggle room there. And how right. long to wait? <clears throat> so really the question is more at this point, do we commit to um, a one path or another? Like if we want to commit to a replacement strategy or a um, or a repair strategy right now, because if we want to do either of those, Jeff could get us could start looking for money. I'd say commit to a replacement strategy, and if if Jeff can't, you know, if we don't get the money, then we can reconsider. Yeah, it's on the backs of uh, everybody here administratively, not just one employee, just for the record. <laughs> yeah. Of course, everything is. You know. <laughs> right. What, but, what we could do is if you generally are agreeing, uh, you know, that's the strategy, uh, my, my suggestion might be this. Uh, you know, I put some suggested language uh, on the motion in the chat box. Um, if uh, you could either go with what's listed there and we could ballpark it, maybe that's how we could do this. Assuming that's the preference of the board. If these are two choices, I prefer the first I didn't understand that, but maybe it was my connection. No, it was bad. Try again, Wes. I believe she said if these if this these are the two choices, she prefers the first one. So Wiz, you prefer the the let's oh, go for replacement? Oh, I said if I have a choice, if these are our two choices, I prefer the first one. Which is replacement? The, oh, the motions. I prefer, yes, of, of the motions, right. I got it. Sorry. The first one says to support design and reconstruction of the pedestrian bridge. That sounds like, like um, fixing it to me. Meaning right? replacement. Yeah, it needs to be replacement. I, yeah. Yeah, we need to have the word replacement in there if that's what we intend. I Instead think of reconstruction. Um, 
I would make a motion just to remove, simply to remove and replace the pedestrian bridge. And the, the details can be worked out by Jeff and his writing and, and as we go along. Yeah, the, uh, the, there's some wordsmithing here, but the key thing is the dollar figure. So if we went after the second version, which shows at 60 grand, that's automatically assuming a repair. If we go with some higher amount, as noted in the first motion suggestion, yeah, it does list reconstruction, but it is uh, effectively a replacement. I think he's just keeping some wording flexible here, so it keeps our opportunities open to seek out other funding sources. I mean, if you want to just say replacement, that's your guy's call, but I think it's just keeping some flexibility built in here. So the X is a placeholder is looking for like a maximum amount that we want to commit of bond funds or of the total total fund? I think so. Town. I think what he's looking for is he wants to be able to put in the application, if he's writing an application for 250000 he wants to be able to say the Town of Hardwick commits hundred thousand dollars from this fund or whatever something like that much like the library in writing their grants said that they were committing to raise however much they raised um, it helps to uh, leverage for the grant purposes we we could and it, it does say up to so you know, for example, we could say we commit up to 100,000 out of the, um, the um, fund balance. And we're also committed to um, pursuing other grant sources that have already been identified. Are we allowed to take this out of the fund balance? Aren't there some, some somewhat, we're calling it an emergency thing, or is it, I thought there were some somewhat strict guidelines for dipping into that. I think. I would say this is an emergency. Yeah, I don't, I, um, we can verify, but my understanding is that the it's kind of up to the select board and it's the we built it to you know the idea was to try to from i don't know some number of years back to try to hope to get it to grow a little bit because our auditors kept suggesting we should have a percentage i can't even remember right now 15 percent 15 percent actually um i think that they said that's actually a blct guideline not an auditor guideline guideline oh yeah yeah we, what do we have in there now, you know? Are we, you're that 15% or? Um, we have 24%, 810,988. Okay, so there's, in theory, there's some extra money in there actually. Yeah, I mean, right. And so this seems like a good, like an unexpected one-time expense for a bridge that has a you know, uh, expected life expectancy of 100 years, you know, maybe that's a good source for that. It's not like we're gonna be going back in five years to look for money for that bridge again, you know, if we go for the replacement, hopefully it's gonna be 50 or 100 years. Oh, oh it will be 100 years. That's the plan. Yeah, of course, but of course we could get the thousand year flood and then all bets are off. <laughs> And we're going to start saving now for that hundred years. <laughs> that would be funny, actually, to start saving for a capital fund. Yeah, <laughs> replacement in hundred years. I mean, um, we should have been. Should, we should have had a capital fund for this, right? Really? I right. Really. I mean, we do have capital funds for sidewalks. We have one for bridges generally, um, but. I think the reality is that we never actually fund those to a level where, you know, something like this, like a total replacement of something that wasn't on the list, that we actually have funds for it. As surely Jeff knows that, right, Sean, that he could show that we do have these, uh, these capital funds set aside for first other projects. And, you know, yeah. there is a bridge fund, it doesn't cover it. But I when we 
when we refer to the funds that the townhouse has set aside for capital improvements, um, that is a that, that is a good thing to be able to show. Absolutely. Yeah, but I think what we're what Jeff's getting at with the um, motions that came in the chat that suggested language is he'd like us to say something like we yeah, commit I, up to forty thousand dollars out of our bridge yeah, capital fund. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that, again, it's not required. It just helps our, it makes our application stronger. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be reasonable to expect that the town will have to shoulder about, I would think at a minimum 20% of the project cost. I think that that's a reasonable guess. Could we use that language? You know, that we will commit to 20% of the, or is it better to go with a dollar amount? I think it's probably better to go with a dollar amount at this point. And we could always change it later, right? Like this is just saying we're going to commit that we're going to spend up to this amount. If it turns out we need to spend another $5,000, we can revisit it at that time. Maybe you can just list a um, uh, motion to commit up to, decide the dollar amount. Uh, from a combination of uh, available town funds. Or just fundraising methods, town funds and other fundraising. Well, I think if we were going to do that, though, we'd want to put a dollar amount because fund other fundraising to me includes other grant sources, which. Well, we're also would... assuming that we will have to fundraise $150,000. So if we're committing a hundred, we're looking at a USDA grant for 250. That still leaves potentially 150. 150. Yep. Right. From from grants, probably. I don't think we're going to get that in bake sales. I mean, we could call that grants and fundraising, and then the town's committing up to 100, which is more than 20 percent of the slightly more than 20 percent if it, if it was 400, right? Yeah, but I we think we're what Sean's pointing out is that we probably ought to just plan on it budget, you know, and our get our heads around a more of a $500,000 figure. And if it comes under, that's great. But it may well, you know, hit that 500,000 mark. So Wiz, did you want to make that motion? Or do you want me to? Uh, look, you is, make it. Is it time to call the question? I mean, you know, we could go yeah, around about so. this for a while. You had yeah, a so. motion a long time ago. Go ahead and make it. Well, I think Jeff's is probably better um, worded. So I, I'd make the motion to commit up to $100,000 from the state fund account or however he would like to word that. So, to, well, I think you ought to say what account we're. I will make the motion to commit up to $100,000 from the Town of Hardwick fund balance to support the design and reconstruction replacement yeah. of the pedestrian bridge located in downtown village of Hardwick that traverses Lamoille River from South Main Street to the south end of the bridge on Daniels Road on the north end of the bridge. Um, within the next two years, hopefully. Well, yeah, or at, whenever is needed, right? As, as possible. Second. Okay. Uh, do we need to, how do we cover, if assuming this is a half million, Eric, how would we cover that remainder? Just we probably would want to indicate that here, right? I don't think that we need to. I think that that's where Jeff's going to have to craft. This is our overall plan. This is our overall budget. We have we're applying for 250 from USDA. The town, if if this passes this motion, the town is committing up to 100,000. We're going to be seeking out other funds through various methods, grant writing, fundraising, to uh, fill that 150 gap. I mean, if, if we, and then if we march down this road, you know, on a parallel effort to fundraising, we can be, you know, if we start to, especially if we get a positive word from USDA, then we can start engaging with somebody to get us some more concrete figures 
on what we actually need for money and and what type of bridge and all that sort of thing and then at that point we, that can kind of narrow you know, what we need to actually come up with if if you could just stand by i'm trying to verify with jeff that that's the right number to show at this phase eric i don't know that he's that there is a right number but go ahead i'm expecting he just wants us to show a commitment we're good, and what we can do is we can. Uh, I didn't. I did not reach him just now, but we can. We have time if we need to uh, do an adjustment. We have two meetings in advance of the deadline of the application. He's got the direction now to know. Well, it's, you have to vote, of course, but he would have enough direction to advance this. That's what he's trying to achieve at this phase. All right. So, any more discussion then from board folks about um, about the motion to commit? up to 100,000 from the fund balance toward this replacement strategy. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Count three. Aye. Four, and any opposed say nay. And we have one uh, opposed from Lucian. All right, thanks everyone. That, Moves us along on that front. What's our, our I, next thing? Oh, go ahead. Eric, I just wanted to add one quick thing about this discussion item. I think there are a lot of questions in the community as to what's happening or to why the bridge has been closed. I wonder if we can, I know that there are signs, signs up explaining a little bit on the bridge itself, um, but I wonder if we can just make it a little more clear to the community what our process is and why the bridge is closed, because I think some people just don't really know yeah yeah um so maybe we could tell them <laughs> you know maybe we could put some samples of the cable like right up on that um <laughs> on the closed thing so if you're like look at this it's broken um uh i, I think the, i got the action item i can we can just do some new updates yeah i mean i think that if so now we we've said we want to move on a, a replacement strategy i think it wouldn't be a bad idea to do something like the library has on their lawn, like some sort of a colorful, like we're replacing this bridge. This is, you know, where we're at. These are our funding sections, you know, when we have more detail about, you know, what we need and where we're getting it. Where so I got to check the legal details about if we can set up a go for me to count for this. So I got to look into that. What do you say, Lucian? And where to send your money if you want to donate. Well, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> yes. It could also be as simple as um, just doing a front porch forum post to remind people to please fill out the survey um, and to to um, let people know that the select board is trying to move forward on replacement um, strategy. You know, simple. You, and and yeah. then explain the bridge is out because, blah, you know because it's right. not safe. <laughs> almost almost sounds like you're volunteering to do that from No, first. I'm not really, but no. if you, you know, uh, you know, Sean's doing his little his updates like covid updates from the town yeah. from the town offices. I mean, maybe it could just be a, a part of that thing, you know, like here's an update here, what's happening there. So, you know, yeah, otherwise, anybody who asks me, I tell them, well, we discovered that it was there was a cable broken. broken and that it was unsafe. And so it's closed now until we figure out what to do. I might keep, suggest doing a, separate post, doing a separate front porch forum post so that it has the bridge in the title. Because I know the COVID ones, I mean, I hate to say this, but I've, been, I've been skimming them pretty. Maybe light. they don't. Yeah. yeah. And the other Maybe. thing about front porch forum is that it, you post it, it's posted one time. And unless you post it multiple times, if they didn't look on it on that day, they still don't know. Yeah, I actually so, missed the survey the first time around. I didn't know it was there until I heard about yeah, it. Yeah, so that's yeah. kind of a thing. I wonder if Doug would do another story now that we have made a decision. Well, Doug is working on a story. Yeah, is he? So, yeah, he's working on a story. He's got really great little history piece of it that I think you helped him with and then and then he has some other, so maybe Sean could just update him on this info. Be glad to. I was just thinking too that maybe a brave soul, if we made a banner, could hang it from the swinging bridge. 
We're uh, a life la- preserver. Is that, is... <laughs> well, we had somebody hang a banner on there last year. We could see if they'd do it. I, I think that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. You guys just created about eight action items in five minutes, so slow down a little oh, yeah. bit here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Move on to the default lease. You, you just committed to it. Now there's eighty. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, so to be uh, and to be objective here, we'll get an update on Front Porch Forum that has just the bridge uh, info noted, and um, we'll get a uh, update to the website as well. Uh, the other thing I do is um, see about getting a uh, you know, if we have an information uh, update that in the future would incorporate a sign um, on the bridge. You know, we can work in this scan code technology. So if somebody wants to donate, they can do it right there from the spot, potentially electronically. So I think we got some good opportunities here to advance this. Yeah. Good. Yeah, awesome. Sounds good. All right, so let's move on if that's all right. Let's move on to the discussion of the um, depot lease. So those who've been following along on email realize that um, WIS has identified some grant funding opportunities that would uh, like to see the, Eric, the yeah. I just sent that to you and Sean. I did not send it to the entire board. So, so let me, okay. Let me, let me, let me fill in the background. Um, the Historical Society just spent about $130,000 on creating um, climate controlled storage in, 100, in, in an 1882 wooden building. And my next thought was, we need a fire suppression system in there. And that actually went on the agenda for the February 1st meeting about two weeks ago. About, I don't know, four or five days ago, I got an email on a a preservation trust list that I'm on saying that preservation trust essentially is channeling money from a, a group called the 1772 Foundation, which will support brick and mortar projects for historical preservation purposes. And among the ones that they, they, we will fund new roofs, we'll fund painting, and we will fund fire suppression systems. At that point, my eyes really lit up. Um, the fine print is that they want the buildings not to belong to municipalities or churches. So basically the historical society you know, to really, really make them happy has to, is supposed to own the building, but it doesn't. We lease it from the town. So I wrote to the woman, you know, the, if you have, if you have questions, contact. Well, I contacted her and said, this is the situation. We are 501c3 and we lease this building from the town and the, that we are responsible for the inside and the town takes care of the outside. Obviously a fire suppression system is an inside project and so it would be us. But because the building is owned by the town, are we eligible for this? She wrote back and said, maybe. Can I? She said, Your, if your lease is for like 10 years and you know you've got you've got this contract that that defines your relationship with the town um it's worth committing it's worth submitting a letter of intent there's no guarantee you'll be invited to to apply for a grant proposal pro- apply for a grant, but you know, submit a letter. So then I went back and looked at the contract that the Historical Society has with the town and by golly, it ran out last September. Um, yeah. It was only a three-year contract and it was a, a vaguely 
converted version of the town's contract with the townhouse. And it had a lot of language that really didn't need to be there. And so I just went ahead and cleaned up a lot of that language that shouldn't be there because it talked about seasonal use and stuff like that. Um, but in order so it would seem not to be so cobbled together just for the purposes of this grant, I backdated it to September when the previous contract ran out. And then I sent it to Eric and Sean and said, what do you think? Um, so that's, that's what I guess I'm asking is, will we accept this contract backdated uh, for 15 years, which is a really long contract in, in the history of town contracts for this sort of thing. But it would, it would expire in 2035. I may not be here. I have, so Wiz, um, so two things. A, I think that it, it's not a problem particularly to do that, but the townhouse has received grants from that foundation and with our current uh, arrangement with the town. Because we are a nonprofit, we apply as the nonprofit and we don't, it, it, we haven't had any problem receiving grants from them. So I don't know if this person is just a different person or whatever, but I don't know that you would really truly have a problem. But, you know, that said, you know, why, I, however, you, the Historical Society wants the least to be, it can be. You know, yeah, another I see it moving out in 15 years. I think that those leases are three years because that's uh, the longest term of a select board member. And there's that thing about committing select boards in the future to arrangements that select boards in the past have blah, blah, blah. But there are other things that don't include that. So it's sort of arbitrary, I feel like. It's not a big deal. I think another strategy, if um, if there's any uh, trepidation about entering into a 15-year contract, another strategy would be um, a contract with options to renew. Yeah. So because it has the, yeah, it re, it automatically renews it. If I mean, Ken and I worked on the one for the for the depot when you know when we discovered that it was like completely not even a truly existent because of the way it was the first version was was put um, and it also made the historical society completely responsible for every single thing on a town building that wasn't didn't seem fair but um, our our lease automatically renews uh, whether we sign again or not I just have been a little bit more diligent in the last few years that we actually do because we kind of want we at the townhouse we've wanted a few changes and so we've been That's able to do things. Right, it gives you an option at a at so many year increments to to make updates if if both parties desire. But it just basically automatically renews, which makes it perpetual. I think that sounds like a really good option. Um, so another, I guess I would point out a couple of things. One is that the, you know, the, actually both the townhouse and the depot are um, valuable uh, to the town in many ways because of the nonprofits that, um, that use these buildings, that, that improve these buildings. I mean, if it was just up to the town, we wouldn't have these assets in town. We need the not we need the partnership with a nonprofit in order to have have these things exist. Um, and I think the other thing that we could keep in mind is we don't, as a board, need to hammer out a lease. One thing we could do is we could um, we could direct our town manager to go ahead and um, negotiate a lease with a historical society, which is usually uh, what happens anyway. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I 
like the idea of an option uh, because that does in effect make it a perpetual lease. Society until the town says no. So yeah, maybe think, we can just work that out with Sean. No. Yeah, we're, yeah. What we're yeah. trying to project is that uh, we're good partners and we have a long established relationship and all factors being equal, we plan for that to continue. So they're just trying to make sure that that good relationship exists, the funding partners I'm referring to now. So that's a good investment. I mean, they, they're, they're trying to make sure they have good investments. Well, be hard pressed to find anybody who would indicate that historic society is not a good investment. If you look at, as Eric's just pointed out, the relationship and importance in the town of us collaborating with the nonprofit historic society and or NEK arts, you know, in the instance of the townhouse. So with, um, I'll review the information. We definitely uh, just make sure it's agreeable for both sides and we'll get it processed. Well, and you've got the language for the, the option that is in the townhouse um lease that you could take out the but it just uh, renews automatically or if you like if sherry would send me or if you would send me that contract i will do the wordsmithing and then send it back to you god knows you've got enough to do and we'll keep it rolling so okay. um, i'll send you a copy so what i'd like is it'd be great if somebody on the board would make a motion that uh that we to direct the town manager to engage with the Hardwick Historical Society to develop a contract uh, for a lease for the depot that renews on a three, is it like a three year basis or something? Yeah. And so then it renews automatically, yeah. Second. Uh, point of order, I might suggest that um, somebody other than Wiz offers the motion just for point of order. I'll make the motion. Sorry, Wiz. Seconded. Oh, seconded. Okay. Lucian, and Lucian, so Sherry makes a motion, Lucian seconds. Any any more discussion on, on this? Thank you. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, that's uh, eyes. That was all the uh, eyes. So motion carries. Excellent. Thank you. Um, next is. I didn't update my agenda, but I think we're at the end and uh, except for we added an executive session, but we have, uh, before we do that, any select board reports, new business, old business. I can make a little correction to the delightful fundraising um, campaign that the annual campaign for the townhouse brought in. I was incorrect. I was adding both last year and this year in our amount. So I, we haven't raised 50 grand, but we have raised nearly 30. Nice. Yeah, still the most ever. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll do a select board report. Skiing is good on the Hardwick trails and fat biking <laughs> and snowshoeing and whatever other things you do in the snow that are people powered. How's the right. The rail trail has had a fair amount of use. Um, I think a bunch of people were skiing on it and it, it looks to me as if this past weekend, snowmobilers discovered it. Um, it's been which, discovered. Which changes the, the skiing uh, experience. Um, but that's how it's gonna be in the future. So, um, yeah. Just, just a had... recommendation for anybody that is either biking, skiing, walking, walking the dog. You know, the snow machines should be following some rules, but just recognize they're moving a lot faster than you. And what's recommended is just, you know, get to the side. If you hear a machine coming, you don't want to, you don't want to have any incident, of course. So just, just for the good of the use of the trail, just, you know, if you hear the machine coming, just step over to the side. Hopefully they're being courteous with you, but it's not a perfect situation. May I go off on a tangent for a minute? Last Friday, I bought myself a trip on a dog sled about an hour with Peace Pups down in, in uh, Elmore, Morrisville. Um, he, he sets his own trail, but he uses about a thousand feet, he says, of the vast trail in that area. And so as we approached it, he brought the team to a stop 
listened for about 30 seconds, said, nope, I don't hear any machines, and we went out on the trail. I thought a snowmobile and a dog team could be a really messy intermixing. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Right. All right. Uh, could we have a motion to enter executive session for contract updates to include town manager? So moved. So moved. Everybody's <laughs> second. <here. laughs> okay, so Sherry has the motion, Kaylee has the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So I'm gonna I will pause the recording at this phase, yeah. everybody. Okay, so just to, I think that was everybody. I didn't hear Kaylee, but since she seconded, I'm assuming she's voting aye. True. Aye. Okay, that's everybody. Unanimous. Okay, to pause. Yep. Okay, we're back online. All and then right. just a reminder, we'll all have to go down and sign tomorrow because it's afternoon now. Ah. Oh. I can sure. shuttle it around. I can't, Never mind. I missed that one. So tomorrow's the day if we're in Alberta. And I assume okay. it's like before noon tomorrow too. I, I plan to go down in the morning before I go to the store, so. Okay. Will you be there all day tomorrow? I have a two o'clock appointment. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> thanks everybody. Adjourn, have a great day. Adjourn. Yeah. Bye.